What's up YouTube? Welcome to another episode of Game Videos, True Stories. That was it. I never stopped. I never stopped banging. I, I started banging hard, then I got so hard that it was a shame. Welcome to another episode of KM Video True 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 Stories. Today's episode takes place in 1991 in the hood on 6th Street in Alviso. Now during this time, it was 6090906, and there was this big two-story house in which three or four families of nine O's moved in on 60th Street. This is the year that America had experienced its most gang-related murders. Over 700 people died that year of gang violence. Also during this time, a lot of First Street East Coast had migrated to the city. So you had several First Streets living in our turf. Now, if you remember Squirrel, that talked about Raymond Washington and Tracy Prison, Squirrel had a son from Pasadena Raymond and a son from Pasadena Devon Lane. They were the Harringtons. So they would often come visit Squirrel around the corner from me, right off of Slauson Avenue. And they would walk to the liquor store, they would hang out, drink, you know, stuff like that. They ended up getting into it with the First Street East Coast. They also got into it with some homies. I'm hearing all this, but it's not registering that dude from PDL be around the corner from me. You know, his pops was smoking and he was a little hustler and a hardcore gang member. So, one of the girls in the house on 6th Street, the 9 O's, ended up getting pregnant by me. So I go over one day just to check on them and they had these little steps, like five stairs, red stairs. When you walk up the stairs, there's nowhere to run, there's nowhere to hide. The door sits all the way out to the stairs, um, basically damn near on the sidewalk. Front yard was very, very tiny, no fence around it, none of that. So the house sits kind of close to the street. I knock on the door. Boom, 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 boom. Strangely enough, nobody answers. And I done pulled up in the 5.0 with the top down, the music bumping. I know damn well it didn't rattle some windows. They feel the vibration. Be a lot of people in the house, a lot of girls and Crips. Homies used to come by there and visit, the coast used to visit. And so I knock again, boom, boom, boom. And as I'm knocking, somebody start knocking on me. There's this car driving down 60th Street headed west. So on the driver's side of the car, somebody starts getting off on me. Like the first shot, I'm just like, the hell was that? And then they get off about four more times and I turn and I look and it's a dude over the roof on the passenger side. And I'm assuming the guy in the back behind the drivers in the Cadillac was shooting as well. I don't know how they didn't hit me. I don't know how they didn't get me. I panicked, I ducked. Got down on one knee. They didn't shot the door, the wall. They didn't shot the light out right above my head. Man, that was a close call. Boom, they turned down out V so headed toward Inglewood. I'm like, shit. So, I gotta assume those was the Pasadena Denver Lanes getting off on me. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm almost certain. It only made sense. 
going toward Inglewood kind of threw me off. Like, hey, maybe it's the kid who shot JR again. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, man, that was a close call, man. That was a real close call. Almost got me, man. Um, and there was nothing I could do. There was nothing that shielded me. You know, this is just another case of dudes that can't shoot straight. Dudes that speed and in a hurry to get their shots off and don't get their man. I mean, I wasn't a man, but I was the intended target, if you know what I mean. So, girls come out and they like, what happened? What happened? I'm like, shit, why y'all didn't open the door? I'm mad at them. Why y'all didn't open the door? And they genuinely concerned about my well-being. And it's almost as if they knew who probably did the shoot. But they wondering if the coast is busting. Nah, it ain't the coast. The coast come over here and the coast cool with us. Coast live in our hood. It wasn't them for sure. It wasn't them. These dudes start getting off on site. So you know it had to be some bloods, period. But man, I was, I was a little shaken up. Just a little bit. You know what I mean? Um. But I'm like, damn, man, that kind of is what inspired me to start calling people when I'm on, they, on my way to their house. I'd be like, hey, yo, I'm on my way. Hey, yo, I'm at the light. You know what I'm saying? So I don't get stuck outside. I know you home. You know you're expecting me. Be at the door, have the door open, something in case of situations like that. But every time I would go over there after that, man, I made sure I had my strap. I remember going over there one time. I think I told the story, but I went over there one time. The 5.0 pull up. And Officer J.J. May, 77th Street LAPD, pulled me over. And he's asking me, where's the gun? I'm like, what gun? He's like, I know you got a gun in here. I know you got a 380. Bells go off in my head and my antennas raise. How the hell he know I got a 380 in this car? I continue to deny and deny. He tell me, make it easy on myself. Just tell him where it's at. No. Luckily, he didn't know what my stash spot was. I'm not going to repeat it because a few of y'all told me I shouldn't tell where the stash spot is. It ain't like Ice Cube ain't told y'all the stash spot's in the car. It ain't like the police ain't found stash spots in people's cars. But yeah, man, I got lucky that they didn't shoot me. And I got lucky over there a few other times when the LAPD pulled me over. But during that time, the story was the homies had hit um, a, a armory by the Inglewood DMV. And I personally didn't know about that, but I did know 380s, some cheap-ass 380s too, man. It's like the government just dropped off these these malfunction, cheap-ass 380s for the purpose of just catching us for an attempted murder or carrying a concealed weapon. You know what I mean? Like, no intentions here, go kill your people off. But more so, here, we want to lock a lot of y'all up. Of course, I believe 90, 91, we were gearing up for next election. Now, if you go back and look in the history, George Bush was the president at the time. Oh, slick George, man. George wanted to make sure they kept locking black people up. Now, in 91, here comes the presidential election in which Bill Clinton won the election. And we know about all these laws that they all try to pass. And we know about Hillary calling us predators. I never had a problem with that word because I felt we were predators. We woke up every morning thinking about going to shoot something, going to squabble something, or talking about being shot at or shooting or getting beat up or beating somebody up the previous night. In August of 1991, the LAPD recorded 122 homicides. One month. About one month later, I too would be arrested for attempted murder. 
The crime bill was not just a Democratic thing because the Republicans unanimously, unanimously voted for it. The Republicans in the Senate voted for this bill also. Although we will blame Joe Biden and Hillary Clinton. But we had the war on drugs. And then mysteriously, more drugs cross our border into the United States than ever before in the history of America. And guess what? That led to more black people being locked up for drugs ever before in the history of America. We had dare. We had all of these things preceding them, and I'm not going to get off into the politics. Excuse me for that. But the fact that guns were put off in Inglewood and the homies allegedly, supposedly stumbled up on this stuff, the guns were floating around the city for sure. I forgot the name of the gun. They were cheap as hell, though. It used to jam up. Some didn't shoot, you know what I mean? But... Uh, I had to make sure I left the house every day with a gun. If I didn't have a gun, my passenger had to have a gun. You, you strapped? You got something? All right, cool. I'm going to leave mine in the house. Oh, you don't have nothing? Don't worry about it. I got one or two in the house. And that's how it went back then for me and for a lot of people, man. You had to protect yourself. You always had to be defensive. Some people was offensive, but you had to be defensive. You had to be prepared for that dreadful day when somebody might catch you slipping. I mean, you could just be going to see your girl. You could be just going to hang out with the homies. You could be going to check on your soon-to-be expected kid being born. Like, it didn't matter. The violence spared no one, and I was always in the midst of getting shot all the time, man. I've been lucky. I've been very lucky that I've never been stabbed and I've never been shot. Been shot at him many, many, many a times, man. L.A. was crazy back in the days. So that's why today we need to get everybody together and have a permanent ceasefire. Hey, man, I'm out of here, man. Hope you all enjoyed my little rambling and ranting. You know what I mean? Uh, Half-ass story. Be sure to click the like button. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Don't be afraid to leave a comment in the comment section of the video. I'm out of here, y'all. Y'all have a great day. Salute you for watching. I'm out.